and we are recording from multiple devices. I think we're getting pretty good at this. We uh, we have number seven. Seven. seven the counter seven. offer. Yeah. Okay. There is a lot going on. There's a <laughs> lot going on in the world. I hope uh, you didn't between, bring an article about FTX. I did not. I okay. did not. There's 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 <laughs> nothing to talk <laughs> about enough, with FTX. There's enough to talk about. That. Yeah, that could be the entire segment right there. Uh, you know, whether it's where to invest money, it's clear there's one place, which is real estate. We love it. Uh, pause to do. All right, there we go. We're good to go. We're making sure our other social mediums. I'll start. Go for it. What do you? What, what's what's going on? Hit it. We're all, right. all getting. Uh... All right. So, <laughs> yeah, Wi-Fi isn't doing well. Doesn't matter. This is what matters. Okay, is that. Who closed their doors to iBuying last week? Zillow. Open door. Zillow. Guess who's next? Redfin. Uh, they all lost money. They were the ones in 2015, 2016 that went into Austin, they went into Arizona, and they said, we're going to change the market. We don't need any agents. And they started just mass buying everything throughout the entire United States at crazy numbers, too, like hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate. And then they lost hundreds of millions of dollars. So Redfin is now shutting down their iBuying program and cutting 860 jobs, okay? 27% of their workforce was tied to iBuying. So a lot of real estate agents are gonna celebrate and everything else, they're gonna say, this is great, it's because of the slowdown. Well, this is what the CEO said. They tied hundreds of millions of dollars to housing. This is his quote that you yourself wouldn't even own. Wow. The CEO <laughs> is even saying, you wouldn't even own what we own. And they lost, they only lost 26 million in 2022. Obviously, I think a lot of the market has to do with that. And it's obviously much smaller compared to the rest of the market. I buying, you know, was said by, um, what's his name, Gary Keller, would take up a fourth of the real estate market. I think that's a bold bet he made, and it's not panning out that way. <clears throat> a lot like, to think about with that. Yeah. I mean, I buy in... Hundreds of millions of dollars. This isn't like but, one but community it, but in Florida. they still own it, right? Yeah. So it's not like they've lost money on it. You don't, you don't lose money until you sell. That is true. <laughs> that is, so that, that's a heck of a hold. They could have... Rent it, it out. Off, write, write, or write it off. Write it off. But... Again, of course, you know, I buyers, they bought the top of the market. You do wonder if they, you know, financed it. I yep. mean, obviously they probably, they had to they, they probably, probably brought did, in banks. But they also probably did yeah. it at the lowest interest rates. Yeah. So, 100%. you know, they bought the top of the yeah. market with the lowest interest rates, but I don't know. I mean, it almost sounds like Do you like, put tenants uh, in there? You could you definitely have to. put tenants in there. Yeah. I mean, I just would love to look through that inventory. Since the CEO is saying that, that's pretty crazy. You yourself I mean, wouldn't even buy this. Yeah. That's I wild. Mean, that is, uh, <laughs> that is funny, confidence funny in the see, product that funny you bought. to see like, what is the worst buy yeah. through the iBind program. Yeah. You're like, it was probably in a package deal. You know, I don't know. I mean, been. you know, maybe that's what's where this is headed. They'll sell off their iBind program. Yeah. Something like that, like separately, somebody who's ready to like salvage it on pennies on the dollar. I don't know. To, to have 860 jobs and then uh, Open Door also laid off, I forgot the amount, and then Zillow as well. So they're not even saying, hey, listen, we're going to keep this on. They're, like you said, they're probably writing it off. And then they're cutting the workforce. So they're not going in on that at all. Yeah. That, so that, that program, to anyone else, uh, if, if Zillow couldn't do it, which had data out of the kazoo, leads out of the kazoo, all the buyers throughout the United States go to Zillow, Trulia, or Street Easy. And obviously, they have a bunch of ancillary businesses. Uh, so A lot of happy sellers. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so article number one, a win for the real estate agents. But personally, I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not affecting me. I don't think I've ever experienced eye buying except no, through it's not happening in, in the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, New York Times. It's never our time. The first time home buyers face a brutal market, unable to compete against older buyers with cash offers. Younger potential buyers feel like they're never going to own a house. Oh. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> uh, 
good article, interesting, right in line with what everybody's been saying. You know, yeah. it's a tough market for first time home buyers. They're expecting the prices to be dropping. They're not seeing it. When the prices do come down enough, somebody has a better offer, you know, somebody yeah. from the older generation. Yeah. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, typical article, but why I like this one is it had home buyers by the numbers right on the first page. And there are Ages. a lot of like really interesting stats. Okay. Uh, 36 is the median age of a first time buyer. Is that's that up the, or down? That's the oldest since the data was collected in 1981. Wow. So, I mean, the, that's by the numbers. That's correct. FTX, I mean, they, they got wiped out. six years old. Yeah, okay, <laughs> enough of this. <laughs> no uh, more. Yeah, he's 29. He brought down the, the age. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, but just there's a whole list of uh, numbers on it, but the couple that stuck out, 26%, percentage of first-time buyers down from the historic 40%. Wow. And the lowest share since this survey began in 1981. You, you know what's interesting, though, is that we're – we were discussing today is that agents can't find homes. So they're emailing other agents for off market properties. Yeah. So it's weird that it's just a weird market right now. It's funny you say like that. Sellers are not a lot selling. Of times I've, I've read like memes online and stuff where it's they like, are accurate. Where it's like, oh, of course they are. <laughs> where it's like, Especially I'm on Twitter. paying rent to somebody in an older generation who bought this and is getting income off of it. Yeah. Not only are they making money, like they're clearing their mortgage payment and everything, but they're creating an income. Cash flow. And I'm sitting there yep. paying, you know, 25% plus of my annual income yep. to some boomer. Yeah. You know, uh, next. So what stat. they're trying to do is make fun of that guy or well, girl. Well, they're just saying it's unfair. In real it's unfair. It's oh. unfair. Yeah. Oh. Well, they're never going to be able to do it. <laughs> like if you don't understand the market by this point, after what we've gone through, that real estate is not a safe haven, potentially, potentially, I'm not your financial advisor, but it's a hold, it's not a flip. And to be honest, there's not a lot of people flipping because they bought it at such a high price and they can't sell it higher, so now it's a hold. Yeah. You know, like, you go out to Brooklyn, a lot of these people, they've held it since the 80s or 90s, and then they pass it down. That's generational wealth. Right well, there. I, and that, it's funny you mention that because those people, the longtime landlords or the ones who have owned real estate, they've seen the cycles. Yep. They've seen it go up and down and High up and down. High interest rates in the 80s. Yep. And Dot uh, com that's boom. where it's interesting now yep. that the market is down. You know, They're it's hungry. almost like the first time buyer is like too afraid of the commitment. Yeah. You know, too afraid of the capital that you have to put forward to purchase a home. You know who's not afraid? Is the fund that you brought up two weekend two weeks ago raised what eight yeah. billion nine yeah. billion? They're hungry. They're looking at those portfolios. Well, that's that's another thing. They're going to be the institutional buyers. Yeah. Are also the ones who are pricing them. Out. Yeah. So next stat is twenty seven percent. Twenty percent of repeat buyers who bought their house in cash. That's up from seventeen percent in twenty twenty one. Wow. So a repeat buyer wow. is buying in cash. Wow. And that is 27%. So that's 10% higher than last year. Which that's was, a huge part so of the, the market. So the cash market is a much higher. Yeah. And uh, They don't want to finance. And those are the ones who are pricing out. You know, they're the ones who give a better offer. Yeah. You know, if the people want the cash offer, not the mortgage financing and all that. So that's where, you know, again, the first time buyer feels like, you know, the only way to beat a cash offer like that is to pay up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're stretching yourself again. Yeah. Uh, last one, uh, I just thought it was pretty funny. Uh, I the, better laugh. The median number of miles a buyer moved to a new home. Hold on, before you say home. it, the median uh, uh, yeah. number Sorry, of miles. I didn't say what it Let's... is yet. The median number of miles a okay. buyer moved to buy a new home. Wow. Uh, from here to, I think, where I live on Long Island, which would be Mineola area, I think is 25 miles. So I would say 20 miles. Yeah, 50. What? 50 miles. That's the median That's number of different miles states. moved. Well, wow. it is. It's like going to Pennsylvania. Yeah. The interesting thing there is the remote work. 50 miles. Oh, yeah. So yeah. with the remote you don't work, need you can go a little further yep. and uh, you go to where the prices are. Lower taxes. A lot of interesting stories and stuff of, yeah. of first-time buyers getting priced out in the article. So I thought it was a good one. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, 
It's one of those things that it actually segues into this, which is Compass. I personally am a fan of Compass. I like competition. I like new exploratory different businesses as long as it's done right. Obviously, the first thing I talked about was Redfin, iBind, Opendoor, Zillow. That wasn't done right. So Compass, public company, a couple other ones are obviously publicly owned as well. So they also put out their financials. People are very emotional online when it comes to posts that are not a, for Compass. So don't worry, this isn't anti-Compass or anything else, but it, it's something. <laughs> nice segue to that. <laughs> I, well, Usually because if you have to give a disclosure like that, that means uh, something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> most, of these, yeah mo most of these posts are like, I can't believe. And the reason being is they're public. Yeah. The, the other companies are not public, so they're not putting all of their stuff out to laundry and Everyone's cutting through. So Compass turned to cost cutting, and obviously this is um, CEO Refkin, who said that they had a generationally, generationally bad year. Compass is, I think, 10 years old. So that's, that's a lot to say there. They lost $154 million during the third quarter. Mm, I don't know how much- Just the quarter. Uh, that's a lot. That's <laughs> wild. And since the second quarter, they've been aggressively as he said, melting down expenses, significant cost, this is his quote, significant cost reductions in technology, engineering, and operating expenses. That was their flagship, was engineering, operating expenses, and technology. It would be very interesting what happens. And this is the most important thing, and I'll turn it to you, is that they cut their recruitment incentive in August. And they're right. actually, ironically enough, having an uptick on how much they're actually making per agent. So the incentive to anyone that doesn't know is they would say you have to come aboard for to Compass for two years. We'll give you twenty five thousand dollars signing bonus in your your split or <laughs> what? I know it's higher than that. <laughs> a little generation or a little uh, generous there. But in other words, they gave incentives, and that's completely revolutionary to the industry on a mass scale. People heard about it, big teams, big agents, but not on a mass scale. And to agents that, to be honest, they didn't prove themselves in bad markets. A lot of them came in good markets. And so it'll be interesting what happens with Compass. To be honest, uh, 154 million, you know, I don't know how much is actually written off and what is actually lost, but they're, it'll be interesting in the coming months because you know, 2023 uh, is yeah. not going to be 2022. No, it's uh, you know? harder to make money. Yeah. But I would also say... Per agent, too. Yeah. But I would say that he's right. In the generational downturn, yep. uh, this is probably a good time to buy Compass. Yeah. I'll go out on a limb there. Because... Yeah. What are they at right now? Well, because interest rates have dropped so much on the public markets, they bounced. They're pretty big. Oh, huh. uh, good. I would say, well, you cut costs. Like yep. all they need to do is become profitable. Yeah. And that he is- He says second quarter next year. So I remember years ago reading an article where he said, Compass has no plan to get profitable. Wow. And that was the bold sign statement. of the times. There yeah. was no agenda. Got it. There was no reason to even think about profitability. Because they yet. were a technology company. They're- Yep, you're growing, yep. you're a disruptor. Like you deal with profitability later. Later on. And yeah. I would say right now, the generational time, this is the time to start thinking about it. Yeah. And you know, long story short, they, you, when you go out to some like random market, you know, Idaho, yeah, you go down to the main- We street. love our Idaho referrals uh, oh, to oh, New oh, York City. A, a, Ohio, <laughs> anywhere. I guarantee it, if you go down Omaha. the street in the main center of the town, you're going to see a Compass office Yeah, that they paid for. They probably yep. overpaid, but at the same time, you know, that's a recognizable brand. They said their agent count is up to 13,000. That doesn't even seem that high. I feel like there's 13,000 in New York. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I don't know. They said principal agent count. Might, I don't know. Maybe might, that's a different, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe that's. Principal agent is at 13 different, 13,000 different, like how many are at Element? No, nah, In knows? Compass. Well, nah, the last thing I'll say on this is that if it is correct that cost cutting, technology is huge. You know, I so I'll just, personal experience in 20. Uh, 2014, actually, when I was starting uh, BPI, 
I got visited by a friend of mine who went from my past company to Compass and he rose, he was a big agent and he's like, listen, come to Compass, see what we have to offer. So I went to the office and it was insane what I saw. I saw this was, I don't know if it was the Fifth Avenue office or the, the uh, Union Square office, I forgot which one it was, but it was just rows of engineers. And I'm like, are these agents? And he's like, no, these are engineers, technical, they're developing the app, it's AI. And I'm like, this is 2014, okay? This is, like, I don't even think Instagram was like a product, you know, <laughs> like, and they're talking about all these things they were gonna do. I'm like, this is insane. It was like, that one is designers. So that's what they led with. And it'll be interesting They probably how... should have hired more people in the accounting division. <laughs> 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 On to my article. No one wants to catch a falling knife. What to expect in the housing market for the rest of 2022? I would love to hear what they have to say. I mean... Who's I, the journalist? Yeah, no, that was a... Uh, Where is this out of? This is from Realtor.com. All right. So, you know... We're not realtors. A headline but... that goes right with uh, what's going on in the market. I mean... Can you say that again? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just No one honest. wants to catch a falling knife. What to expect in the housing market for the rest of 2022. Okay. And uh, the whole article, you know, basically I mean, comes down to this one uh, phrase. That mindset is freezing the housing market. Okay. And I th agree. You know, because people are nervous to get into the market and there's a lot of uncertainty out there, yeah. it's that mindset, that headline, that exact headline, yeah. falling knife. You know, That's how wild. much money are you going to lose? That. Are you going to buy something and it's, it's just going to keep going down? Yeah. You know, that mindset has created a freeze. So do they focus on sellers or buyers? Uh, buyers. Probably buyers. Yeah. 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 Uh, it goes back to the first time home buyer. Yeah. You know, they don't want to commit so much, especially when everybody's telling them, oh, there's going to be a huge housing correction. I mean, I've read that all the time. They're saying, why would somebody buy a house right now and it's going to be 25% cheaper later? Yeah. It's like... I, I That's not happening, people. I mean, you got to block out the noise. You got to make your own decisions. And uh, yeah. yeah, I thought that that's a good phrasing for it. It's freezing the housing market. It's just bringing, yeah. it's scaring people, yeah. you know, making people less transactional. If you're reading that, you know, <laughs> what about on the seller side? Like, yeah. are you trying to put your put your house on the market in a uh, falling knife scenario. Yeah, that's I mean, why there's less inventory. They want it to Buyers be like- Buyers can't find a home that they want to buy. They're waiting for sellers to be desperate. Yeah. And I know we don't that's see that happening. in New York because it's nobody's like over leveraged like that. But yeah. uh, you know, maybe in the outer markets. Listen, you know. it was the first week that I actually brought up why it's not going to crash. And it wasn't from me, it was from uh, Real Trends, I think it was. And it was eight, very well researched. You got to pay for this information. So it's not like they want clickbait. This is an actually well researched uh, journalist. And one of the biggest reasons is that people had to put down more money. There was no 100% financing. Yeah. So if anything, it didn't go down the 20% that they had to put as a down payment. So it hasn't dropped 20%. It's not going to drop as 20%. And the second thing that they brought up is that rents can easily outweigh that. That was the biggest thing in 20, 2008, is that in Miami, which was at the time a second home market, and Las Vegas, which was a second home market at the time, I don't know what it's like now, but when the owner defaulted, it was because the tenant wasn't able to pay for the rent. So the tenants are able to pay for the rent, they can easily rent it out. There's and not gonna the be defaults. They, they have the low mortgage rates. Like, I don't know, like, you you have to have that that like that first two four five buyers that go into the market. It's, it's stable, you know. It depends on the market, but whenever it's I hear way different than what's in the headlines. Whenever I hear what the discounts that people are thinking are going to come off the asking price, I always just think email can, me when there's a deal. You can go get that by being proactive and making offers yeah. that are ten percent less than what the asking price is. Yeah even less if you really want that like extra deal. I also but. said it last week is that when you historically look at, it's easy in New York City because you could look at what one bedroom's traded for in that building historically. Obviously in the suburbs, it's a little bit different, 
because it's hot, it's, it's house, it's acreage, it's school districts, a lot of things go into it. But in New York City, if it's already discounted 10%, off of what it so historically would have sold for, that's already 10% below probably what the seller wants. Now you're getting another five, six percent off. You're 15 or 16,000 or 15 or 16 percent off of what it normally would have traded for in a healthy market. Yeah. Say like, and I would also say, like, let's say you buy an apartment and then a comparable apartment sells for a little bit less. Is that person who just bought an apartment thinking, Oh, my value is going down. I, I better sell. Yeah. You know, I better desperate. It's a de whole. desperation sell. You just sit on it. So, yeah. 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 Well, okay. those are probably the best articles we've had because it's towards the end of the year. Obviously, catching a falling knife. You're hearing about it. I buy in program compass and everyone else cost cutting. What, what this is when the institutional investors, they're just hungry. They're sharks. They want to get involved. And if I was a regular buyer, like there is no bottom until it's in the rear view mirror and you're like, oh, that was the bottom. Right. Th th that was like, you can't time the bottom. It's impossible. Right now, it's a winter time. I'll, I'll, I, I know you probably have something to say, but I got a DM from someone that was looking at a multifamily property on Long Island. I haven't talked to him in 20 years. I didn't even know he followed me on Instagram. And he said, is it a good time to buy? I'm like, it's the winter. You have no competition from other buyers. He's going to pay cash. I'm like, buy the place if you're going to hold it for five or six. He goes, it's a 10-year hold. Buy the place. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you going to wait for? Like another 10000 off? Someone else is going to come in and swoop it, and then you lost the property. It's yeah. silly. Well, I was going to say, you know, yields are very likely to could be coming down. Yep. And every time that you bring up one of these articles, it's about, you know, more layoffs. Yeah. So that's exactly what the Federal Reserve wants to see. More layoffs, lower inflation. That's going to make lower yields. You're holding something for 10 years. You're going to be fine. Yeah, there was a, an Instagram post. We'll leave it on this. There was an Instagram post by someone that's, they, they have a decent, they have a big following. And they're like, are you ready for 10% interest rates? That was the whole post. And I'm like, I don't think we're going to be getting, this is weeks ago when everyone's like, it went from four to five to six. And it's like overnight, 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 and just adding to it. What happened? What are we looking at now? Rates going down. Like, did it peak? I don't know. But 10%, that's a wild, just scare tactic, to be honest. And they're in the real estate industry either, too, which was, you know, a little, little debatable. Hmm. But anyway, that's the counteroffer. Every Tuesday, we're going to be going live. If you guys have any articles you want to send over to us, you know, Instagram, Facebook, whatever else. We're not really TikTokers. But uh, YouTube is another good place. I'm a consumer of TikTok. <laughs> we don't produce any content. We consume. We want to make sure the ad revenue goes back to TikTok. Anyway, have a good day, and we'll see you next.